If you are not studying the data of your store and sales, you are seriously going to be falling behind your competitors. That's why I'm a massive new fan of Printify's Insight tool. And today I'm gonna to show you how you can actually use this new Insights tool and what decisions you can draw from this so that you can move forward in your store with data back decisions. So when you actually come into Printify, there you're gonna see a new tab called Insights. And once you click in there, you're gonna have a bunch of different tabs right here, overview, product performance, best of Printify, price updates, and product quality. So today we're gonna to go over how to study your own data to make decisions and how we can also use the best of Printify data so that we can start implementing what works best for others in our store as well. So in the top here, what we have is our time range, our charts time frame, and then we have a bunch of filters that we can add. So say I want to study all of my sales for the last year. Instead of 90 days, I can do year to date. There is some more here. So I can do last 365 days, or we can set a custom time frame as well. And for me, I'm going to change this to the last 365 days. And then maybe instead of that, instead of a weekly breakdown, I want a monthly breakdown. So in the overview of my store for the last year, I can see what months have done really well for me. I always do really well in November and December, and then I get my little fall off for summer, and then we start making our trend back up. But I currently have about 12,000 sales in the last year with 78 in production. And we can start seeing things like our top selling products. Which products are doing really well for it? What type of product is it? Is it a sweatshirt? Is it a t-shirt? What kind of brand is doing really well? We can see which country we are selling the most in. I definitely want most of my sales to be from the US, so I'm happy with that. And then as well, we can come down to our expenses. And I actually love this right now, the expenses, because I'm selling on both Shopify and on Etsy. What I can do is I can go to sales channel and I can filter by Etsy or Shopify to find out if one is doing better than the other. So if on Etsy, I have a best selling product, but not on my Shopify, by checking those two, it can reflect that. So for example, I'm gonna do sales channel. And for me, I'm going to go to Etsy. We're going to refresh our data now. And then scrolling down, we're going to see this in the lens of just Etsy. So I have 11,000 sales on Etsy. Scrolling down, I can see if I have a different best seller on Etsy versus Shopify. And I can also calculate my expenses and break them up by the different sales channels. And this has been a game changer for me in understanding the separation between my two stores. So now coming into product performance, scrolling down, I can see for me that my best seller is the crew neck sweatshirt, followed by, if you hover over, you can actually see the item model name, which I wish showed there. But my second best seller is the Bella Canvas 3001, followed by the Comfort Colors shirt here. So in our categories, we can see are my two shirts, but still my sweatshirts using the Gildan 18,000 is my best seller, but shirts isn't far behind. And I can actually see if I just change the time range to 90 days, it's gonna show my t-shirts as my best seller because right now sweatshirts are in their slump because it's hot outside. But soon as the winter months start coming again, my sweatshirt sales shoot up and in a 365 day range, they are the best seller. And then I can also take in things like, what color is doing the best for me with my Gildan 18,000? For me, it's forest green. My niche seems to like forest green on these shirts. So if I'm ever creating more sweatshirts, I need to make sure that I'm also putting them on forest green, followed by sand, which is my second best selling color, for my best selling product. Then I can also filter this data. So now I know what the best color selling for me is for my sweatshirts, but how about for my comfort colors? So what I can do is I'm going to go to Printify product model, or you can go to Printify product, and I'm gonna type in 1717 just to find the comfort colors 1717. I'm gonna refresh my data here. And now scrolling down, now I'm able to see that pepper is by far my best selling color with this product followed by moss, then ivory. So moving forward for my niche, I'm probably gonna always make sure I'm including pepper. But on top of this, something that's extra helpful is studying what best-selling colors are for other people. So we have what works in our niche, which might be different, but knowing the market as a whole can also help me decide on what colors to offer. So going on to the next tab, which is best of Printify, I'm going to add 
the product that I want to study. And then I usually add in the product model just to make sure the filtering works well. So right now I know the Gildan 18,000 is my bestseller. So right now I'm going to study this one and I'm going to scroll down here and across all of Printify data, I can see sand is ranked number one for the best selling color in this product. And then followed by black, white, ash, sport gray, navy, and forest green. And I'm actually very lucky. I sell all of these except for sport gray. Sometimes I'll do ash instead, but I'm going to be using this to make decisions. I often offer maroon, but it's pretty low down. So maybe I'm gonna consider not offering maroon as much because maybe I've sometimes left out forest green. I've left out offering sand when that is the color that most people prefer. So I'm going to make sure that I never leave out sand out of my color choices. Now I've changed it to be the comfort colors. 1717, scrolling down, I can see the most popular colors for these are pepper, ivory, white, black, moss, jean, and chambray. So I'm gonna be, again, using these to make informed decisions on what colors I wanna offer. For the Bella Canvas 3001, black is actually the most popularly sold color. Black, white, dark gray heather, natural, athletic heather, navy, and heather navy. And I actually did not know that navy was that high of a selling color until doing this research. And you're also able to see little trend indicators here, say if a color is getting really popular right now, or maybe it's decreasing popularity, you can take a look here to try to find any trending colors as well. The next really helpful thing is catching any price updates. Printify does send price update notifications and emails, but maybe you didn't catch them or you prefer just to take a look at this personalized one here. So I've been on Etsy a long time. I have so many things saved in drafts or taken down. So mine is quite a mess here. So nowadays, the only products that I offer are from SwiftPod and Monster Digital. So I can add a print provider and I'm gonna do SwiftPod and I'm gonna add in Monster Digital. If it doesn't show up, that means there's probably no price update right now for them. So if it doesn't work out, that means Price Monster Digital probably does not have, a, have an update for this date that's automatically put in here, which is June 27th here. So just Swift Pod. And now I'm going to refresh the data. And from here, now I'm going to get personalized updates on what's getting a price increase. And again, I don't really sell the hoodies much anymore. I do have them in there, but that looks like the only thing that's really getting an update. Some of the kids sizes as well. But if I wanna make this less confusing, I can also go through the Printify product, add in a filter to find out if my t-shirts are increasing, if my hoodies are increasing, or my sweatshirts are increasing, or whatever it is. But if you have a cleaner Printify than me, this is gonna give you a lot better data. And then you can scroll down down below and actually see what the pricing is changing. So we can see here that for SwiftPod, the hoodies, which are the comfort colors, one, five, six, seven, they're going up $2. If we scroll down here, we can also take a look at the shipping price update. So it's going down 10 cents in shipping. So you can use these to find out any price increases if you prefer not to use the print by emails. And the last screen here should bring you lots of peace of mind, which is your product quality. So you can filter again by any filter you'd like to add. But for me, I'm just gonna keep what was set there. In the last 90 days, I have a 99.5% of quality. So that means only have 0.0% of products that have had an issue. And even if things have an issue, you shouldn't freak out because Printify's customer support is amazing. If there's any quality issues, the wrong print was sent, if it's crooked, any quality issues at all, Printify will offer a reprint or refund. But you can see here that really, in comparison to how much I sell, it's not that bad. We can see the quality issue, which we've never been able to see before, like things like stains, wrong pin, preling print. You can also filter by the print provider name. So you can find out if maybe SwiftPod has a worse quality than Monster Digital for your sales or vice versa. You can also check on the different Printify products. But really when you're freaking out because you've gotten a few bad reviews that day or people messaging you with quality issues, you're gonna pay attention to those. You don't pay attention to the 99.59% that are actually happy and that didn't have an issue. But coming back to this insights tab just helps me feel relieved 
belief that I actually have a good business model that has a really good quality rating. And at the bottom here, you can also see, so for me, my t-shirts have a slightly, like slight, 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 slightly higher quality issue at 99.59, while my sweatshirts are 99.65. These I don't really sell. Uh, they're just listed, so they all have 100% because I have not sold many of them, so there hasn't been that many options for a refund or reprint. And then I can also see my print provider quality. Again, I am probably 99% all SwiftPod of things I sell. So that of course is going to have the lower quality rating because these ones maybe have a sale or two. So there's not that much data between these ones, but I'm feeling really good with my SwiftPod of having a 99.61% approval rate. Now with this, we're gonna go into calculating your store profit. Understanding your store profit is extremely important, not only for tax purposes, but for business decisions. You need to know if you need to raise your pricing, if certain tactics or certain products for you are making you actually lose money. It's really important to know so you can make pricing changes in your store. So for me, I at least check on a month to month basis now, but when you're first starting, you should check product to product or sale to sale, which we're gonna go over after. But right now we're going to take a look at our monthly profit. So in the time range, you're going to put custom. And for me, I put May 1st to May 31st of this year. And if you have multiple sales channels, you can also filter it. Or if you just sell on Etsy, then you can keep it as is. But for me, I sold 782 items in May. And scrolling down, I can see that I spent $18,745. $45. Keep in mind that in the Printify Insights right now, everything is in USD. It makes it a little bit harder for me because I'm Canadian, so I get paid out in Canadian. But for Americans, it might be a little bit easier here. But now at least I know exactly what I spent on Printify in May. And then you need to get your net profit from whatever sales channel you use. So for Etsy, for example, I'm showing you my other store here. This is not the matching print on demand store, but coming here, you can go to your finances, your monthly statement. And at the very bottom, you're going to click view all monthly statements and you can go back to May and you can switch it here. But I can see for this store that I obviously don't use <laughs> anymore. I still made $55 in sales, but we're also going to get all of our fees and I can check out my fees, all the different fees here, minus any marketing costs. So I actually have my fully net profit. So I would grab whatever number this is, minus how much I spent on Printify to get my monthly profit. And then you're also gonna minus, again, any extra tools you use. So if you're paying for Canva and you want to include that in your profit, you're going to include that too. So now you'll actually have how much you made that month. But if you actually want to calculate your profit per order, what we're gonna do is you're gonna go to product performance, scroll all the way down to your product sales. And what we're gonna do is we're going to hit the top three buttons here and we're going to download. So now I've opened up this data in a Google Sheets. And what we actually wanna do is calculate the cost per item sold because for some of them we have multiple. So in this month I sold two khakis, which were two XLs. So to calculate the cost per item, I'm gonna create a new column here. I'm gonna hit equals the total cost divided by the number of items sold. And then we're going to hit okay. And now we have the cost that we paid for all of these different products. And now we're going to put in our sales price. So maybe I know that for all of my t-shirts, I charge say $23.99 for all of my sweatshirts. I sell these as $34.99. What might help here is actually organizing these by product. Um, you can do this when you're about to grab all of your product sales from earlier and add in the different filters. Or what you can do is actually when we're in here, what we can do is select everything. We can go to data, create a filter. And then first we're just going to do the, let's clear all. But what I'm gonna do is for the unisex heavy blend crew neck sweatshirt, for example, I'm going to hit okay. And then for all of these, I know I charge $34.99. And then if I ran any discounts, I can put these in or $34.99 was just my after sales price. I can add in any fees I have. So you can go and calculate how much fees you pay to Etsy. Back under monthly statements over here, you can see, so we had sales, which were $55 and our fees were 986. 
So what I can do is do 986 divided by 55 times 100. So I actually paid about 17.9% in fees. So what you can do is grab your fees divided by your number of sales. So you can do 986 divided by 55 times 100 is going to give you your percent of fees. So this store, all the items are digital downloads. Again, I don't use it much. So the fees are very high because I always have to pay that 20 cents and every item's like $2. But in my other store, my fees are about 8%. They are higher because again, I'm Canadian. I also pay taxes and all of those fees, but you should definitely check it yourself because depending on where you live, it might be different. So mine are about 8%. So what I'm gonna do to calculate my general fees is I'm going to do equals sales times 8% or 0 0.08. And then, so I have my fees at 2.79 for this. I'm going to drag this to make sure it is under every one of these listings here. And then my sales after fees is this minus the fees. And now to calculate my profit, I would do my total sales after the fees minus the cost that I paid to Printify. So my profit for these orders, for the Excel sand orders is 1033. Again, I do not do this by order anymore because I get sometimes close and especially in the winter, over 2000 orders and it would just take too much time. But when you're first starting out and you have just a few orders to make or a few ones to check, I do recommend just grabbing your profit once in a while just to understand where your profit is at. Again, now I do this on a month to month basis and I only grab how much I pay to Printify every month minus how much Etsy paid me every month and that is my actual profit. Again, and this is not a hundred percent truth right here because your profit percent or your fees percent might slightly change, but this is to make business decisions on where your profit is currently at. I recommend for everyone that sells with Printify to be using insights, at least to take a look at it once a month to understand where you stand, to understand which print provider is doing best for you, which colors you need to be offering, which sizes are doing the best for you. It'll really help you make decisions. And if you're just starting out, taking a look at the best of Printify to understand what's working for other people so you can also implement that in your store. Understanding your data is something that I have struggled with for a long time, but this has made it so much simpler. And again, understanding your data is critical to running a successful business. So thank you Printify for implementing this. And I hope you guys go take a look at yours and get some useful insights as well. If this helped you at all, please drop a like and subscribe. It would help so much. Thank you guys.